Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, Reaper Guy, and if you're a Reaper user, I'm going to show you some really cool, quick tricks. If you're working in a studio and you need headphone mixes for people that are separate from everything else you're doing, a really quick way to build those, have it automatically rooted for you, and then we'll go one further and be it's clever in a way where we can give the artists a way to access via their phone, their tablet, their laptop, a way to control their own headphone mixes so you don't have to. Massive time saver once it's set up and this really quick setup system with the inbuilt remote software all built into Reaper. We use the SWS extensions and we're going to go through that right now. If you want to learn more about how to use Reaper, we cover everything you can possibly imagine in the Ultimate Reaper Guide. Some of this stuff is brand new, like this auto cue mixing stuff. That's all new, but a lot of the stuff that's from the foundation right the way up to the advanced stuff is all in the Ultimate Reaper Guide. The link is in the description below. Okay, so headphone mixes in very short order. You can do all this completely manually, but Honestly, that's a big waste of your time because you can do it super fast and I'll show you how. Let's click some buttons to show you my screen. And I've made a relatively simple session here. There's no actual audio in it because this is just a demonstration. This is just, I mean, I've named these drums, bass, guitars, keys, vocals, backing, reverb. Um, if you've got loads of channels, like say for drums, you've probably got like 10, 20 microphones. I do those in a folder so I could make all my different drums, have them up inside that folder for the demonstration purposes of this video. Um, that's just, that's something, if you want a headphone mix for everybody where they can change every separate thing, you can do that. But if you just want to have them have control over drums, bass, for example, rather than tiny little changes, you can do that as well. It's entirely up to you as to how deep down the rabbit hole you want to go. Um, some artists I find don't like it being super complicated with like a hundred different faders and they just want the basics. Some, especially let's say I'm tracking just a drummer, they might want access to all the separate microphones to uh, tweak those separately during that session. Uh, this is all about offloading um, effort from the engineer to the musician, not out of laziness, but out of enabling them to cut out the middleman and very quickly go more of this, less of that, more of that, less of this. Anyway, I digress. Let's just shrink this drums thing down that I did. And part one is that we want to make Q mixes. So we're going to need the SWS exten extensions, something that I highly, highly recommend you get. So the SWS extensions, you'll get those for free at sws-extension.org. Get them for whether it's Windows, Mac OS, Linux, whatever it is that you use, and they will enable this cool feature. So if I shift and click all these channels so they're all selected, I could control and click them if I just want specific ones, or you can, I think it's option and click on Mac, I can't remember exactly which one it is, but just make sure that the tracks that you want to have in this headphone mix are selected. Then we go to extensions at the top, and we go to, where is it, Qbus generator under C for Qbus generator, there it is. Give that a click, and that brings us up this menu. So, what we wanna do is, what I like to have is have the receives type as pre-fader post effects, so that if there are any, I don't know, compressors or anything like reverbs, anything that you've got in Reaper that are making the sound the way you like it, they are applied, but then the volume of whatever I, as the engineer I'm doing in the control room, doesn't affect what they're hearing. They have a completely separate thing going on. So, here we have bus name. I've called it derp. Let's just call it headphone one. And we'll select our hardware outputs. Not one and two, because that's the main uh, software. That's the main monitor outputs. Uh, generally speaking, I would have my headphones for this on five and six or seven and eight. I, you can have up to eight outputs for this headphone mix, but what I'm gonna do 
is do this and go to create Q bus and player press this button here. And that's going to make me a headphone mix. And it's already popped up all this stuff. So that's already done for me. Now you can see down here, headphone one. Now where the solo button is, there's a little lock. This has already been set to solo defeat as we could see in the settings and master parent send was unticked because we don't want this to go through the master output and then through the speakers. We want this to go out to the headphone amp. So talking about headphone amps, it's worth mentioning if you want to do this for multiple musicians, you need multiple headphone amps. That should go without saying, uh, but it's worth mentioning the if it's different mixes for everybody, you can't use one of those headphone amps that's got like one input and eight outputs to eight different people because that'll only give you one headphone mix. It won't work in that situation. But if you've got enough output channels through converters or through an interface with lots of outputs and you've got enough separate headphone amps to do this for a full band, that's how I do it. I've got a separate rack mounted headphone amp with four outputs. I've got three other dedicated headphone amps. So I've got more than enough to cover a full band in this kind of situation. Now that made me one headphone mix. Let's just say, let's undo that. Let's say that I also wanted the same mix to go out of seven and eight. I hit generate. That's gonna make me a Cubus. Oh, helps when I select all the tracks. Create Cubus. And that's now made me exactly the same thing, but with two outputs on. So far, so good. Now, I've got Cubus settings, one, two, three, four, all the way down to eight here, and it saves the settings. Now, oh, there's show routing window, which I'm gonna untick, because I don't want that to pop up every time. You can create a bus from a track template. So if you do this um, over and over and over, you can have a template ready. But what I could do, is have uh, Cubus settings as headphone two and have a different hardware output for that. So let's say seven and eight, and then that's settings two. And then let's say headphone three, HP three is coming from output A.3 and four, let's say. So that's where I'm getting into the extended stuff. Now, if I hit create, I'm just gonna delete that one. Yep and make sure these are all selected and create Qbus for three, create Qbus for two and create Qbus and create Qbus for one. So now you'll see at the bottom, I've got headphones one, headphones two and headphones three, all going to their separate headphone outs. We've got loads of sends all around here that are all set up ready to go. And now it gets clever that, so if I was in the control room as the engineer and the musician said to me, can I have more drums? I could go to, well, let's just rename these HP1 and HP2, just so it's easier for you guys to see. So if the guy on HP1 says, can I have more drums? I just drag that and go up more drums. I could go less bass, more guitar, all that kind of stuff that is now affecting what this person hears. And then, so yeah, headphone two, they could do all that, but that's still down to me. What if from here, I wanted them to have access on their phones through just being on my Wi-Fi? So this is where it gets clever. So all these headphone mixes that we've got, let's go to options and preferences. And right at the bottom, is control, OSC, and web. Now I've already got something in OSC in here, but we'll just ignore that. I'm going to add web browser interface. Now, if you are a little bit kind of, you need your network to be a little more secure, you can have a username and password. Um, I'm not going to do that here, but we change the default interface to one that's called more me. And that, does this thing where it gives us an IP address. Now I'm going to make this a little simpler. If I click this use rc.reaper.fm and then go ID, I don't know, uh, Adam Steele. This is not now on the web technically, but if I hit apply settings, oh, error getting local port. 
Let's try this local port. There we go. So I've changed the port to 8081. It seems something else is running on 8080. Um, but yeah, now if I go to rc.reaper.fm slash Adam Steele, that will then work out from there that it's actually on my local network. It's not an internet thing. We're not running sound through the internet. That's just a nice little shortcut so we don't have to see this horrible set of numbers right here, which is going to be different every time for, depending on what your network is. So at this point, I'm going to hit OK and hide all this. And I'm going to start a screen recording on my phone. There we go. And I'm going to go to that rc.reaper.fm slash Adam Steele and hit go. And that very quickly goes success. If you like it, we can bookmark it. Great. And there we go. If I hit select your monitor track, it's giving me the option of HP 1, 2, and 3. It already knows. I can now go, I'm HP 1. And that came up with the drums, the bass, the guitars, all that kind of stuff. And as I change these, you'll see on the screen there, that's changing my headphone mixes. And the master fader is just affecting the overall volume. And you can see on the, the level, that is actually changing the level specifically of that headphone mix. And because it's solo defeated, you saw those little locks on the solos before. If I'm in the control room mixing and I decide to, I don't know, solo the keys and the vocals, that isn't going to create a solo for everyone on the headphone mixes. They're going to keep hearing what they had as their mix. And I'm going to be able to solo things without screwing up their day. Super super useful. So there you go. With two easy steps, I have made it so that every track that I wanted to be is available to the guys on their phones, on their tablets, on their laptops, however they want to do this. It's web-based, so you don't need an app for it. It's just done. And the Cubus generator means that I didn't have to spend time making all this complicated routing. It was just done for me. So yeah, that is something that saves me a huge amount of time and something that will hopefully save you loads of time as well. If you found this useful, check out the Ultimate Reaper Guide from ProMix Academy, which I did walking you through right from the very beginning all the way through to some of this advanced stuff that saves you loads of time. And I show you how to record an entire rock band with electronic stuff, how to manipulate MIDI, all the kind of stuff that makes life fun. Thanks everybody for watching. Now, back to me. So there you go, in very short order, we've made some really complex headphone cue mixes or speaker cue mixes for whoever. And that means that they can then go ahead and in the vocal booth, live room, whatever, change whatever they need to change without having to stop you every two minutes. So you can focus on the engineering, make sure the tracking's right, make sure everything else is exactly as it should be. If you found this useful, check out the Ultimate Reaper Guide. The link is in the description below for Pro Mix Academy's course from me and the guys at Pro Mix Academy. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.